At the end of my last video where I uh, took a look at OpenGL versus Vulkan X-Plane performance and, and was quite impressed by the massive increase in performance, I wondered to myself if uh, my five monitor sim might be able to be run by a single computer. My GTX 1070 Ti video card only has four video ports, but I had seen a Michael Brown video where he explained how to use the internal graphics card uh, or onboard video for your uh, computer, and I thought I'd give that a try. First, I'm going to explain how I got to this configuration of using five monitors to build my sim. And then I'm going to look at some of the results of the tests and give you some ideas and strategies about, about what you can do with the new Vulcan X-Plane. I think anyone who's tried it has pretty much had their socks blown off by the new performance that they get out of the Vulcan uh, version of X-Plane. But it opens up a lot of possibilities to do some things that we couldn't do before. So hang in here. I'm going to, in the next few minutes, I'm going to try to share with you some of the ideas and some of the things I've learned through my testing. Um, thanks mostly to the coronavirus, which has given me a lot of time to waste on this project. I think we also owe a round of applause to Austin Meyer and his crew at Zed Laminar for getting this out during the quarantine period so that we had something to keep us entertained. Now, before I start, I'd just like to say that uh, don't take my numbers too seriously. Uh, these are my numbers with my computer. I'll explain how I got them and show you what my computer configuration is. But as you know, depending on your CPU and your GPU, you can have vastly different results with the same settings. So take that with a grain of salt and look mostly at relative changes as I show you some of the numbers. Like most of you, I started out with a single monitor and single CPU, connected it up and loaded X-Plane and off I went. And I was amazed at the results. So I enjoyed a period of relative bliss enjoying my new hobby with my simulator until a friend came and said, you know, what you really need is a new monitor. You know, if you had a new monitor, you could put those pop-out windows onto that, just like in a real airplane. And, you know, you could also run Air Manager and, and show panels that you could interact with, and, and uh, maybe even both. That would be the best, almost like a real airplane. Come on, man, you need to do that. So I entered into another honeymoon period with my newly refined sim. When I read something online that said, you know, what's really cool is to use a big screen TV for your monitor and just show the scenery only really adds to the realism. Besides, with that extra monitor, you've already got a control panel, so you don't really need that on the screen. And while you're at it, if you can pick up three of those TVs, you can wrap those things around and really feel like you're in a real airplane. Now, I justified this expenditure because what else could you need for a SIM? This would give me the perfect SIM. I'd never have to spend another dollar. Also, I regrettably began my deception of my wife at this point as I began to master the art of sneaking large items into my basement SIM without my wife's knowledge. In a couple weeks, it became obvious that the frame rate on my visual just wasn't what it needed to be and led me to just one final purchase to make my SIM perfect. I needed to get a less powerful CPU to run an air manager panel so that I could have a panel independent of the simulator. With my frames recovered, I had reached Sim Nirvana. I had a panel and I had a wraparound view and I was a happy man. And imagine my wife's relief when I assured her that I was done buying stuff for a Sim. I had it all. Well, I think it was a couple months later when I saw a YouTube video where some fella had put a second monitor and attached it to his computer. And he had two air manager panels and it was really awesome. So I had to buy another panel, but it was going to be the last thing I was going to need. But still, I thought I had to have it. In fact, since air manager had touch control, I decided I better just get two touchscreen panels so that I could operate the cockpit like a real airplane. You never see a mouse or keyboard in a real airplane. Well, me, my wife, and my sim were pretty happy for the next six months or so. And then a friend invited me over to his house to see his simulator. He had a panel just like in a real airplane. And I thought, you know, my monitors look like a real panel. I just need to build the panel. So that was the next project. 
So things were well once again in my sim kingdom, except I did notice I kind of missed those pop-out windows from X-Plane. The G530 was nice, but heck, now they had a G1000 for both screens. So all I needed was another copy of X-Plane to run on the second computer. Of course, that computer wasn't quite strong enough, so, oh heck, I'll just get a new computer for the visuals and I'll take the visual computer and make it my panel computer. Since the panel computer was only driving pop-out windows, it really didn't need a lot of graphical power. And it could even operate Air Manager and the pop-out windows at the same time. Man, I had it made. So I shut off my computer that night and prepared for that wonderful, peaceful sleep that you get when you know you have victory. I had built the perfect simulator. Wow, I didn't see that coming. This changes everything. Do I really need two computers to run my system? Oh man, I hope I didn't blow it. What will my wife say? These freaking Vulcan frames are amazing. Quick, let's hook up the old number one monitor. We did that before the second computer. We know that works. And where's that Mike Brown video on and using the onboard video to hook up the fifth monitor? There it is. Okay, let's get it hooked up. It's the moment of truth. What kind of frames can we get out of this thing? Okay, guys, you know the COVID thing's been working on me pretty hard to get me to do something like that. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you a quick video of the uh, route that I flew, basically lined up offshore at Los Angeles International since it's a pretty high-density airport, pretty tough on the frames. I set the situation to start on autopilot, fly in towards the airport runway uh, six right, I think it was, and then turn to the uh, to the northwest and then back back to the right uh, with a timing so that uh, the route is flown the same each time and about the uh, with an autopilot and a and a uh, auto throttle so that I get exactly the same exposure so that I get a good comparison between runs. So I compress the time on the video so it won't take so long. It's a two and a half minute uh, run each time. And I did it about 20 or 30 times. So it took a little while to do that, to collect the data. I captured the video from all five screens and uh, I think this is double speed. Here we go. Okay, so as we're heading in here off of uh, towards six right, we'll go into about uh, 45 seconds about over the inner marker and then we'll make a left turn to the uh, northwest forty five seconds to turn of course this is double speed we'll make a turn out towards the ocean Each one of these is a 60 degree field of view. Obviously you don't look right flat. Okay, we're head out and here at an hour, minute and 30, we start our turn back towards the airport. Hawthorne Airport, I think it is up there. And we will head straight there. And when we get over the airport, we'll stop. And that's the run each time. We record the data. I'll take the data log uh, and uh, save that. And then each run, we'll just repeat it over and over with different monitor configurations and some different graphic configurations. And coming up on two and a half minutes, that's the end of the run. So here's a good look at my, a quick look at my video settings that I use for the test. Pretty demanding considering the uh, pretty high, uh, high number of objects in the LA area uh, with a high setting on the visuals. And here's a quick look at my uh, system that I'm using to drive the visuals. You can see nothing special here uh, by today's standards. Uh, the uh, similar video cards for sub $300 now out there. Now, just for a reference, I ran the OpenGL first uh, with this same configuration and got a frame rate of about 18.8. .8. And then I switched to Vulkan, and you can see I got a 29.4, about a 56% increase in frame rate on that run. You may remember in my previous video, I had almost a 100% increase in frame rate, but 
that was kind of anecdotal. This time I actually recorded the data and didn't just read the frame indicator. So I trust this more. So then I disconnected the second computer and ran the three visual monitors on the master computer, uh, visual computer. And surprisingly, I got almost the exact same value with 29.3, just down a, a tenth of a frame. So keep this value in mind as kind of a baseline number to compare other numbers against. So here you can see a summary of the tests I performed. Of course, at the top, just the uh, one monitor hooked up with nothing on it with the 29.3, uh, just running the scenery only, but with the extra monitor. Then we go down to number one there, and you see they have uh, the scenery on the one computer. Also connected to the one computer is uh, one monitor running an X-Plane pop-out window. Option number two shows uh, the scenery running plus one window plus an X-Plane uh, pop-out window and an air manager panel on that monitor. And the number three shows the scenery running and on the extra monitor, the fourth monitor, two pop-out windows from X-Plane plus the um, air manager window panel. You can see uh, the frame rate drop there from uh, the just one pop-out to the uh, more extreme condition at the bottom from 28.6 dropping down to 26.3. So as we add the uh, fifth monitor to the internal uh, graphics on the computer, the onboard graphics, we see about a half a frame drop, I guess the, just the CPU uh, having to share memory and so on with that. So it was a slight loss, it was none of obviously with the second one off the graphics card. You can see here, uh, first uh, option number one, adding two uh, air manager pop-ups, and you can see drops of a couple frames uh, to do that. Uh, and then uh, pretty much a frame per pop-up is what it looks like. And then uh, to um, air manager drops to 24.1 if we have two air manager panels and only one pop-out. And then all the way down to 20.5, which just wasn't really that playable at, at uh, with two air manager panels and two pop-outs, which is the configuration I normally ran on the uh, two-computer system. So I know this is getting boring, so I've made a graph to try to summarize this. You can look at this on your own later, but basically it has uh, three columns for monitors, three, four, and five numbers of monitors. And then on the left, uh, three divisions for no explain pop-outs, one explain pop-out window and two X-Plane, and then each of those is divided into no air manager panels, one air, air manager panel, and two air manager panels. Then the frame rates listed in the um, cells. Now it looks like there's a lot of uh, empty cells here, but the, the uh, yellow highlighted cells, of course, since it's scenery only with three monitor configuration, we won't have any windows of uh, X-Plane or air manager on those columns. But I did want to show the uh, and in this area marked in yellow, I uh, only included one, well, obviously the values with no air manager panels uh, because I wanted to see what the monitors would take on their own. But, but I only included the uh, logical choice of having uh, tw the uh, two monitors because if you had five monitors, you could have two. But if you only had four, you would only have one, and that's not going to be a problem. So the 24.2 and shown in red is the... Uh, value with two air manager panels running on a five monitor system. And finally, these areas are either illogical, like why would you run two air manager panels when you only have one external monitor uh, besides the scenery, or uh, just uh, bracketed, those other ones are bracketed by the no panels in the uh, two panels, so we know the values in there, so I didn't bother with those. So just a quick summary of the data. I've highlighted in green the areas that with these settings that would be acceptable for me, close to 30. Uh, you can see the yellow I've put uh, in uh, the questionable mark area. Probably want to reduce the graphic settings. And, and the uh, red would definitely need to have a change in graphic settings. Uh, the uh, You can see uh, with... Uh, no air manager panels and uh, no pop-out windows, obviously no problem. And with one uh, pop-out window, uh, pretty much everything works except trying to run two air manager panels uh, on the fifth monitor. And then again, the fifth monitor is a problem with uh, two air manager panels and two pop-out windows. That's the most extreme. 
Looks like you lose about four frames or a little over that by adding the Air Manager window. But it does give you a lot of benefits, and we'll talk about those in just a sec. And just a warning in case you're one of those people who thinks that we'll just run uh, uh, the extra two monitors instead of pop-out windows, just actual uh, scenery windows. And let's see what happens if we try that. Well, I tried running uh, all five monitors using the 3D cockpit and got an average frame rate of 16.9. And I also tried running the entire uh, five monitors on scenery only, and I got even a worse frame rate of 16.1. So that's definitely not the answer. I have to be honest, the uh, graphic settings that I used as the base settings are way above what I used with OpenGL, even on my two-computer system. So I thought I might want to uh, dumb down the graphic settings a bit. And here's what I tried. On the left or the CPU side, I reduced the reflections down to low, and I got rid of show parked aircraft. And on the GPU side, the left, I reduced the uh, anti-aliasing down to uh, a low value. With these reduced graphic settings, we ended up with a frame rate of 39.3 frames per second on the basic three monitor system. That's a gain of almost 10, which means that many of the other options that on the chart there, you can do the math. You add 10, 10 frames onto those numbers, and even, the, even some of the five monitor setups look reasonable. So the dog on this chart, which is the... Uh, two X-plane pop-outs, two, two air manager panels on them, five monitors, which is my general setup that I had before uh, Vulcan came out on the two computers, uh, would still have, uh, if it recovers most of that 10, close to 30 frames per second. Remember, the OpenGL version was only getting 18.8, .8, running only the scenery on uh, a single computer. So what's the bottom line from my test runs? Well, first... Five monitors will work, but you have to be willing to sacrifice a bit on the graphics. Still better than what you had with OpenGL, but nothing close to what Vulkan is capable of. Second, if you're happy with the visual quality and frame rate of your current three monitor single computer system running OpenGL, you'll be more than happy with Vulkan running five monitors. The smooth, almost stutter-free operation is just awesome. Finally, once you see Vulcan with its reflections and PBR textures, tons of objects and beautiful anti-aliasing, it's really hard to go back. If you're doing pilot training and you don't really need the highest visual quality, but you needed just a good smooth frame rate, you may be able to get by with the system. And if cost is an issue and you just can't afford the hardware to go with a two computer system, that's fine. In fact, you may find in the future that you can take your current computer and use it to run the uh, panel and buy a new computer with a nice beefy graphics card to really exploit what Vulcan has to offer. As for me, the answer is it's hard to go back once you see Vulcan, and I'm going to continue with a two-computer system. When your wife finds it in the basement, just blame the guy on YouTube. Thanks for watching. And if you would like to be notified of my videos, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell and you'll be notified when I put out a new video. Please like and share. And I certainly enjoy hearing your comments for improvements and other ideas of what you'd like to see on my channel. Thanks.